I'm Aisha Hilton and I'm very excited to share with you today some new stuff and a demo of the Deckable app. I've got Nick Collette, the founder of Deckable, with me today and he's even wearing a Deckable shirt. We've got Deckable merch. I love it. Welcome, Nick. Thank you for joining us. Awesome. Excited to be here. It's good to catch up. And I'm really excited. You've done a lot of work on the app and it's really coming along really well. And, you know, I've been a fan for, must be, it feels like nearly two years. I can't even remember how long, but it's really coming along. And there's so many things that have been developed and refined in the app. And I can't wait to show everyone just how beautiful it is. And we're going to start off with one deck and it just show people what it's like as a user to use the deck, Kabul app. I'm going to pick today the self-study oracle. And that's the most recent deck that I've used. That's why it's on the left. The decks are automatically sorted uh, based on recency. Um, so here I'm just going to start off with, um, I can I can do a quick draw, which I can draw one or two or three cards at random. Um, let, me, let me just do a two card quick draw. There we go. So I'm now, I've now got my cards and I can now touch those cards. And I'm literally just, you can't see me there, but I'm pinch and zooming uh, yep. those cards. And, and at any point, I can tap on any one of the cards and flip it over. Uh, I can tap on the other card, flip it over. I could go by tap back. I can flip all to flip them over. And what you'll notice is this this is actually a four-sided deck. So we're back to the, that's the back side of the deck. There's the, the face, the artwork of the card. And then we're into two sides of the guidebook. So side one. What was that? See them both, and then flip again, and then there's the full, full text description, and that's pretty cool. Uh, because then you never have to look up your guidebook, right? There's there's so many cases where people have all these huge guidebooks that they don't have with them, they don't look them up in every reading. I mean, it's my belief that ninety percent of people, ninety percent of the time, don't use the guidebook because it's just effort. Whereas here, well, I know in real life, I can't stand guidebooks because I can't read. The, the font is often so small. And with my students, I often encourage them to do a deckable deck with multiple sides so they don't need a deck. But if they're printing a deck, to design a deck so that people don't even need a guidebook. So deckable solves the problem because you don't have to print the deck and it costs so much now for printing. So it's beautiful in that it does that. Okay. And, you know, I see that there's a meditation here, like the creator of this deck could have actually recorded this as a meditation for someone as well. So you can do so much with Deckable. And the thing to remember is if you're a creator, you can publish the deck now and then add your audio recording or your video recording. And we're going to demonstrate video and audio later. But, um, you know, here we are with the deck and I'm using it and um. The big change in the last release, the latest release of Deckable is I'm touching the cards. It's very effortless. And when you see this gray menu at the top, you're then you're in canvas mode. And if I, but if I touch the card, you'll see I jump into card mode. So now I'm on the humility and intention card. And at the bottom, I've got four buttons. The video button is disabled because this deck doesn't have a video. The deck button just takes me to the deck page so I can you know, remind myself more about the deck or the author. Um, the guide is really pretty cool. It takes the the, the text from your um, from the description of the card and it's actually like a virtual card, right? So and it's very good for those of us with <laughs> vision issues because we right. can zoom in and out right. Um, right. and make it bigger. Right. And, and that's on the card as well as the guide right. description. Exactly, right? So I'm I'm on, and then as well, just to make it super easy, you've got Zoom mode, right? And Zoom just, yeah. and then when you're done with Zoom mode, you, zoom, you, you are on Zoom and you're back to where it was, right? So How did you get back to card sort? So you were in? Oh, I just tapped the canvas. Oh, okay, yeah. So that's just, yeah. So it's just a toggle. As soon as, and you don't, you're like, I'm describing it to you yeah. to explain it. I, I don't even think you need to explain it. It's really that you, I mean, you, you, if you don't ever explore and touch, you probably won't find it out. But that's the that's the kind of our assumption is your average user today taps and clicks everywhere. There are some people that don't and and, and really yep. have to encourage them to do that, because if you do that, you will find your way around Deckable very effectively. 
I think if you gave it to a kid, they'd work it out heaps quicker because they just go for it, right? Right, right, right. No one, yeah. nobody, nobody reads the manual. No one wants a guy. They want the thing to be that intuitive, right? So here's, yes. here's the two cards that I picked, right? Let me just uh, put them back to that side. So there we go. And now if I tap on Canvas, you see I've got the plus bottom at the bottom? Yes. I'm going to add a couple more cards. And now, I mean... This is our card picker, which is really, really slick at this point. You can search for a card. You can flip the cards. I'm going to flip the cards over. I can shuffle the cards. And if I if I stop the shuffle, I'm actually changing the shuffle. I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm in for it. That's really important. Randomness. This isn't just some computer random. You're actually involved. Like your energy of the universe is changing and affecting your card. And people love that. Like when they've got a traditional card deck, they are the yes. ones that want to say, "Okay, I want this card." You know, exactly. there we go. So, and you can, bringing this tactile experience to an app, which is fantastic. Okay. And then, if I want to, I didn't need to. I'm. I didn't need to flip the cards. I could have chosen blind. If that's how I want to work with my deck. I can yep. shuffle it and then I just pick a card and I choose it. I choose it blind. Totally fine. I'm flipping it to show you, like, because it's more fun to demonstrate it that way. But your yes. whatever your personal practice is, the way you want to use cards is up to you. And here we have, I can just drag love onto onto the onto the canvas now. The the plus button's gone away. I'm automatically here with my 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 three cards. I want to add another card. Um we have quick draw here now as well. And this is and so quick draw just picks a card at random and pops it on the canvas for you, which is fun too. So it is, yeah. And it means you can build your own reading as you go based on what you right. need, not just some prescribed, you know, layout. Yeah, exactly. And so now I've got four cards on the canvas, right? And I can do all the things I've shown you already, but there's this cool feature called layout which is really, really incredibly useful. And I didn't, it's just got better and better. And you To use layout, the first time you use it, it, you have to just hold down. And if you hold down on the layout button, you get this option to choose your layout, right? I didn't and, actually know that. So there you go. <laughs> I'm learning something too. Yeah. And so um Mix is just random, so you choose mix, and now it's primed. You can see the icon above layout is the random thing, and so I can just do this to random and shuffle my cards on the on the playing surface, right? Have fun, yep. <laughs> right. Um, we can have grid, so that's for people who are OCD and want their things nicely laid out. You can do that. And by the way, if if, if I add um, more cards, right. I mean, this is, isn't this insane? I do like a tidy grid, I've got to say, when you're, you know, journaling or trying to work out something. Isn't that beautiful? That's that's amazing. I didn't know it did that. And then this is even this. We're just getting going. So this gets yeah. really even cooler, right? You can do a one card. And so what the one card does is it just takes you through the deck of cards that you've picked one at a time. Are you that's doing that like you're yeah, rotating I them? So I'm just yep. tapping. Yep. So and it just brings the next card up yeah. so you can focus right. on that. It's it's stunning. That is beautiful. And can you show me, there's a couple of other layouts, like what's the mix? Yeah. One? So the, there's two card layout. So two yep. card, it brings you a pair. Yeah. And it randomizes, right? Yeah. Fabulous. And three cards does the three cards. And then when you, if you anytime you just change it, I want to go to grid. There we go. Or I want to go yeah. to and that and every time you re-click it, it shuffles them again, right? So mm. it's, just, it's so beautiful to do that. And if I click grid, I'm back to organized. I click grid again, it just moves them around differently. And so quite when, satisfying, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> I think it's one of those things, you know how people love to watch cooking stuff or you know, just even just watching the cards move around in the layout is really relaxing. <laughs> and and you know what? That there's a game in there. Like you mix that up and, and as soon as you see a pair next to each other, you could remove them from the canvas. Like <laughs> there are creative ways of using Deckable to play games. Well, here we've on got three on an angle of all green. Yeah. 
yeah, there we go. It's like first one to shout, right? Shout it yeah. out. Um, so it's really beautiful and simple. And oh, by the way, I didn't show you this before. Uh, when you search for a card, right? Um, so if I, you know, like demonstration, I'm there and I found it, right? Yeah. Um, but the cards, the cards have also got tags. So there's a, in the right hand side, there's the tag option. You can find cards by tag, right? So I want, I want cards on hope, right? So it's pulled out a suit. That's, that's the cards from a suit filtered down. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, I can see so many uses <laughs> for this. I mean, this interface is absolutely stunning. You know, it's come so it's come a long way oh, since I first right. downloaded the app. Right. I, I and I mean this takes time to learn what's really needed. And, yeah. and we've made some we've made some mistakes along the way, but holy shit, if we landed on some really cool stuff. I mean, this is, you know, we you've got to keep changing to try. And by mm. trying to get to the like this layout button was just a random experiment and, and and we didn't really fully appreciate it but then as we've uh, now we understand it we've made it better and better right no it's cool. beautiful it's better than yeah. it's just one thing i hadn't pressed cuz i often just do a one court card pull um yeah. i know cuz that's just one's enough for me every day let's, <laughs> so let's, let's have yeah. a look at let's have a look at journal cuz we've we've really uh we basically integrated journal and meditate to be the same experience. But you just make yes. they're next to each other um, and they behave the same way. So if I click on journal, here we are. And I've got, there's my layout of all the nine cards as laid out on the canvas. But if I want to journal on an individual card, I can just go through each of the, each of the cards one by one and stop on humility and say, okay, I want to... And then I, I'm sure he'll have seen this. I want to talk about humility. Yeah. yeah right. There we go. I just turned my video off because this cat was scratching at the door and now she's coming to look at Deckable. <laughs> yeah, it's a calm cat. Cats, cats love this deck. <laughs> cat. She go. never goes on my desk normally, <laughs> but she's yeah. drawn to it. And then, um, so, so you can see the journal is underlined because I have a journal in there right now, right? So then meditate. Yes. It's exactly the same. You can meditate on the on the collection of cards as arranged on the canvas, or you can go through and pick an individual card. And, wow, uh, that's beautiful. And then you set the time that you want. And if I can, it, it pings me in and then it counts me down and it's going to ping me out, right? And so it, it's just very, um, you know, we need, we need simple and consistent. And that's, it's taken a while, you know, um, that is beautiful. Wow. And this deck is so lovely that it makes, I feel like it's really nurturing to the nervous system, this deck. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's, I think it's stunning. I absolutely yeah. agree. And um, that experience, oh, the one, the one thing we didn't, we didn't, is share. We've simplified share. So there is share. And it's so basically... is it sharing a link to the sales yeah. page for the deck or no, your no, no. reading? Oh, what yeah, is it sharing? Exactly. So it's sharing, uh, there's my reading. So it shows yep. the reading I laid it out. Um, and there's my um link to the deck. deck. Yeah, exactly. And we did we did have it sharing journaling before. I think we'll bring that back in time. We keep tweaking, you know, you've got to keep sometimes this is the funny part about software. You have to sometimes you have to take things away. <laughs> you know, and then they come yes. back. Sometimes sometimes things we take things away because maybe we sometimes we forget that, but sometimes it's just you've got to experiment and and that's why we've got where we we are right now. This is a phenomenal experience, in my opinion. Very proud of it. Um, but simplification is sometimes just moving things around, you know, to make and just changing better. how things, you know, yeah, even just the menu, the way that um, I think the layout of the menus is has improved as well, and just the ease of using that. And I can and then, see a lot of thought has gone into, like I have a background in IT and user interface design and I'm much happier with this version. <laughs> oh, it's stunning. Like here I am just yeah. tapping on it. I'm, and I'm in card mode now because you can see the the, the menu option is different. But yes. I, I don't have to come in and out of card mode. I just, I can jump from card to card, right? Yes. So, and I think it's just that learning how to use, you know, your hands on the deck right. as if it's, 
a tangible object. And, and I think almost previous card deck apps have actually been an impediment because they were all rigid. They weren't tactile, right? Yeah, you could sort and maybe stop a sort and that's about it. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, so this is a lot different. So I'm loving this deck um, and that's the tags and the zooming in and the four sides. It's just really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I think it's okay, going to so blow people's minds. Yeah, so then we're back to the timeline, and here's the timeline with my prior readings, right? Yeah. Um, and you've done multiple readings in one day, so we can see yeah, that, exactly. you know, yeah. they're just accumulating, um, and you can go back and look at, you know, your readings and your journaling and stuff like that. So it's it's very comprehensive. I come back in here, I'm back into that reading. Previously, I just did, yeah, there it is. Yeah, so it remembers it. Yeah, everything's there. So um, the other thing I wanted to, what was next? Up? Um, that was it for that deck. Okay, cool. So I was thinking we would look at the Louis Vuitton deck. Oh, yeah, okay. Next. So I, I could, uh, well, here's, I can just open up a prior reading. So here's the prior reading that I put uh, this this yep. card, which is and this was a this is a, a deck that's a challenge. It's a thirty day challenge. So you pick a a card a day, and then you do the challenge that's that's detailed on that card. So this is pull in a partner, and it gives some text there to tell you what to do. Um, but you if you tap on the card, we move into card mode, and you'll see the video button at the bottom is enabled, and. Hey, it's the Barton, and today's prompt for your short video is to pull in a partner. Now, I don't have a partner here right now, but for this prompt, what you could do is go. So, let's so it's on a card itself. Yeah, but it's so on the canvas. I'm like playing did with he, it. With that, he created a card and then embedded the video, or how is it's, that? How does that work? It's magic. I can't tell you. I'll have to shoot you first. <laughs> no. <laughs> so just who designs that the card that the video goes on? Did yeah, you... that well that is a card. Uh it's just a video. So this this basically that is a YouTube shorts video. Oh, so he's done that himself. He's put a yeah. frame around his YouTube video. Yeah. Can you go back to the video and then freeze it oh, yeah. just so you can see yeah. what I'm talking about? Hey, so, so, the on and today's um so yeah. that whole card is actually his short. Yeah, like exactly. when he does his short, it has the logo and stuff. Because it's weird because right. it looks like a card, right? <laughs> well, that's the that's the point. I love it. <laughs> right. And yeah. Lou built this, I think, and then we brought it to Deckable and we didn't originally play the canvas, the video quite like this on the the canvas but now you do it's just it feels so because i thought like it would just fill the screen and that's it but you right. actually treat the video like a card right because because that's what you should do and yes right? that's the experience you'd want to create right and so, now like if you use um, canva and stuff it's quite easy to design like a card for your videos and then drop in each video and export them yeah. so yeah. that's quite doable and I mean, his deck is about YouTube shorts, so <laughs> he needs to have video, yeah. otherwise it wouldn't be as, you know, impactful. Yeah, but, but video is, a you know, a big part of so many decks, right? The potential mm. for is so huge. And we, we've talked about this, but what I've really discovered is sometimes you just have to lead by example. You have to show yes. people exactly how it does, what it does, and then they go, oh, I could do that, describing the fact you could do a video. Um, you know, and So if me... we go out of the video... And we go like back to Lou's deck. So oh, yeah, okay. the challenge option isn't active yet in terms of delivering a card a day. So if I want to go in and use it as a challenge back right. to that yeah. deck, right? Um, I just search for if he's called yeah. it day one or right. Exactly. Do I right. just search and I just know where I'm up to? Yeah. Like yeah. So I go to day one and then tomorrow I do a motivational quote right. and then promote my home page i've actually yeah. got this deck downloaded i just haven't had a chance i only got it yesterday so i'll be playing with that as well because yeah. i need to do some videos really and, you know, lou and uh, uh Ro rosie batista ran that ran together that uh this is a as a workshop for people so so a hundred people turned up 
and did this challenge live, together yeah. with because it was a paid live experience, right? Yes. You got the deck and the experience, and yeah, so that's amazing. And so and it just shows you like the diversity of things you can do with the deck. And did yeah. everyone was this deck already live when they did the challenge? This deck was live. It, the experience wasn't as good as it is now because you had to click different places to get to the video. Yeah. So but now it's more seamless. So Yeah, well we we used that we we saw that example and just said okay, let's play. We already knew we wanted to play cards on the canvas, but we've done it now and now it's like wow. And this so is a amazing. good example of that. Yeah, exactly. And so the we, deck is a challenge as well. We you can use Deckable for challenges right now in a in a future release we will we will be alerting you to say here's card one here's card two here's card three come back and do each challenge each day right so yes that's pretty mind blowing and there's um, so many things you can do challenges about like health and even like Instagram posting or TikTok right. posting or you know and right. pretty much any of the stuff you did for lose um, right exactly. so you could I'm then sure translate into TikTok or whatever. Right. So this is an example of a different style of video. Yeah, this is a TED deck, TED Talk deck. So here's I picked three TED Talks at random, right? Yeah. And I could I can flip them one at a time, or I could or I could flip them all, right? And so then I've got uh, whose that is. So we'll play this one, right? Yeah. So is the video uploaded to Deckable or it links to YouTube? No, it just plays to YouTube. So this is Kelly McGonagall. To, um, How to make stress her. your friend, yes. Yeah. yeah. So this is Kelly McGonagall's sister. That's not Kelly. It's... I have a confession to make. But first, I want you to make a little confession to me. In the past year, I want you to just raise your hand if you've experienced relatively little stress. Anyone? <laughs> yeah. I don't see anyone raising their hands. No, um, no. Yeah, so that's, so if, if you already have YouTube videos, you and I were talking about this the other day, Nick, where yeah. if people have a podcast and a lot of people have a video version of a podcast, you could yeah. actually you know, link straight off to this as a quick, quick way of doing the deck and then have your podcast art as the the front, the first side of the card. Yeah, totally. Right. Yeah. So all I've done here is in this example, I took a, I took a, a clip, a screenshot from a, one moment in the whole video, right? Yes. And then made that the card art. And then when you play the card, you get the video. So Yeah. So this is basically almost like a three-sided deck in that you've got you know the shuffle side where you don't know what you're going to get and you click ted right. turns yeah. over you see a speaker and right. then you click on play video yep exactly and then also there's the guide that tells me the information about that card right so yeah yeah so that's the that's the video on the canvas and then i don't know if i meant that i thought about this before but uh the daily ceremony deck is a great example of, of a deck with just audio. Fulfillment. Are you hearing that? Yes. Recognize where in your world you currently feel fulfilled. Give thanks to the humans or circumstances that have brought that feeling about. Gorgeous. I love her voice. <laughs> and... I love like if you're a coach, especially, or a mentor or a teacher, it's such a beautiful way to bring a content from your course or your book or your podcast and then, you know, give this audio and that can be a meditation. It could just be, it's almost like an audio guidebook as well. It is, yeah. So that that just kind of, I mean, those are two or three beautiful examples of audio and video played seamlessly in Deckable. I mean, we've pulled it's together. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> visuals, text, audio, video, journaling, reflection, meditation, a full timeline so you never forget your card decks. I mean, this is a pretty rich experience and it's insanely unique. And it's basically, you know, 
this is the thing to build your daily practice around. Like, and from a mental wellness perspective, it doesn't matter whether this is at the workplace or at home, if you create your daily practice of just grabbing a moment, an intention, and coming to meditate, coming to journal, and card decks are perfect for that. It all pulls together beautifully. And even like with the TED Talks, you know, maybe it's part of, like for me, I'm very committed to learning and growth. Right. So, you know, the TED Talks, if they were on a theme, you could have, right. you know, that's my daily dose on my walk in the morning because you don't necessarily have to watch the TED Talks. You can just listen to them. Absolutely not. No, true. Very true. So I do a lot of listening while I'm walking and driving. So the deck, you know, could be engaged with, you know, if, if it's a 10-minute talk, you know, you can turn that on on your walk. Right. Um, yeah, I love it. Thank you. The other thing I was wondering if we could look at the washer pig deck. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's suits. Okay. Um, so suits are a little bit different to tags, Nick? They, they are tags. They're the same, they're yep. exactly the same thing. Um, it's just there, there's a specific use case of way people use card decks and if they um, set up uh, tags as uh, the suits that you want to draw, then Deckable will pick you one card from each of the suits or two cards from each suit or three cards. And we had all these options before, but what we've done now is we've re let you turn off all the other options. Mm. So, here, so like, it's not to I overwhelm think. and confuse people. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Because Simplicity is important. Yeah. And and simple is usually, you know, we've we've given the creator the ability to turn off things to create a simpler experience. So here with Washer Pig, there's no quick draw one, two, and three. There's no free form draw. I can't uh, draw two cards per type or three cards. I've turned that off too. Just one option, right? So I click in here and say type draw. Here I am. You ready to play a game? Okay, I'll go what. <laughs> And I know you're a big game player, so this is you just but, love. <laughs> you'll you'll like this game. This is fun because yeah. So write a headline for paper straws. Are you ready? So this is an advertising game. Yes. You've got, to, you've got to write a piece of ad copy for paper straws, speaking to psychologists. <laughs> okay, so people get enraged when they're drinking a drink with a paper straw. And the paper straw just dissolves and you can't get your drink out. What can we do to help them deal with their rage? <laughs> they need to dissolve their anger. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. So that's really fun, actually. Yeah, um, so let me just play a game. So gamifying, like this one, it's gamifying your creative brain right. in the area of advertising, right? So write a headline for a vegan meat alternative for people who refuse to use social media. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? No, I can't think of anything because I'm on the spot. And this is this oh, yeah. is the sort of thing you can do, you know, as an anti-Alzheimer, anti-dementia practice as well. Right. Um, right. So now I'm thinking of, you know, some of the games that I play with my kids and, you know, I'm not a big game player. I know you've developed a board game and you love right. games. But I'm just thinking, oh, what could we do that would help, you know, with our brains as well? Exactly, right? So, <laughs> um, I, I mean, I adore this game. I think it's really, really cute. But I think it's a, it's, it, it should be a signal to people as to what kind of things you can create for Deca. Because I'm even thinking that, of like team building activities, yeah. like I used to yeah. work in corporate, and you could actually use this and plug it into your projector, right. and you know, have people work through activities like this as a team building yeah. thing or a creative um, and the cool, thought process. And at your office site, everyone's got a smartphone in their pocket so they could all have their own deck and they could they could either answer the same question or, or their own. They could break out into teams. I mean, it's just so flexible. And now like with Zoom and, you know, Microsoft Teams and being able to plug your phone in, um, you can actually do this like we're doing it now. You could have a group of people and we use use this as a way to run, you know, a Zoom creativity session as well. Right. Exactly. And just peeling this back, what's actually going on here, this is the power of randomization because there's a whole set of uh, headlines and there's a whole set of who's and what's 
and the deck deckable is randomly picking one card from the topic for the advert and one card for the style of how you're meant to write the advert. So there's literally millions of randomized combinations. Mm. So you can think of using deckable as a way to, you know, what thing can I do to inspire my personal growth practice? Or you can create mm. a business case. You can, you can crime industries with um, uh, technologies and they combine them randomly and see what product, what idea does that generate for me? What, what, because you can come up with problem solutions inside a business with this, or it's just, it's just a fun, it's, it's both fun and serious. And it's using that randomizing in a really creative way, not just for getting like an Oracle reading for your day. It's actually really the structure creates a totally yeah. different process. Yeah. Um, at, this is a different deck. I'm going to show you now a simple truths. And this is a deck by, um, Dr. Robert Roland Smith, he's 20 years into, you know, 20 years time served um, therapist, uh, psychologist. He's a really interesting and fascinating, very smart guy. And he's created um, this, I'm using the same technique with this deck. With this deck, we, we're going to pick three cards from there. And they have three, this, there's three, three cards that are red. Yeah. And there are three things that are green. Ooh. Right. Because there's two suits in this deck. Yeah. And so I and and basically it's the, the red cards are all positive. I don't deserve to win. Right. Sorry, the red cards are negative. I don't deserve to win. Um, I'm a little better than you. That's a not a nice thing to say, right? <laughs> I wish you will, not a nice thing. And then the other, the flip side of that. Others can take this forward. I'm going to let go. I, I can hand back what is yours. I will share my secret. These are all more intimate, positive human behavior mm. traits. And it's just fascinating what these might do. And, and the, these are um, these are called systemic sentences in, in the therapy world. And so this, this deck is kind of, a, on some sense, is very serious. Robert is, you know, uses it professionally. But it's also... A, a fun thing to do in with an intimate partner it's a it's a it's a good way to explore the darker side there's always like in personal growth you have a darkness deck right there's, there's, yes um there's always the bright side but often the biggest growth comes from looking into the darkness the dark definitely side. the shadow is where it's at yeah, <laughs> so go. i've got a death a death a deck um yeah. about death and reflecting on death and dying and also getting organized so yeah. could i use these to can people search like in that use case you know i've got six different areas of life yeah. well i just jump in there to search yeah and so you can see i can i can look at the the guidebook or the red cards or the green cards yeah if i, if I Filter on on red. These are all the red cards, or you would see they were red if I um, turn them over. Turn yes, them over, right? Um, and if yep. I search and filter uh, on green cards, you would see those are all the green cards. Okay. So it's very easy to. I mean, and you think about this with a you have a, a large deck, and you want people. You're expecting people to sort through the deck and break them into piles and split them up. That's a lot of effort. It is <laughs> zero attention span, and then they want to put it back in the box and unmix decks and unshuffle stuff. Painful, ridiculously easy and deckable, right? That's the that's the thing. This that is made, really that's fabulous. I'm going to see what I can do with some of my decks to make them a better experience. While we're talking about that just, sort of stuff, I'd love to that. do a multi deck draw. Yeah. Okay, I'll do one of those and say one one thing you just you just said about creating a better experience. And I think that's what everyone who's creating a deck on Deckable needs to appreciate. They are creating an experience. Yes. And if they don't use and step through that thing, the experience won't be the same as it could be or would be if you thought about how am I designing an experience? Mm. Because you are designing an experience. You're not present when they play with your deck. What is their experience? And it's, it's incredibly rewarding when people get your deck and they do stuff with it and they feel like an achievement because the deck has helped them solve a problem 
make a decision, feel better, you know, whatever it is, that's that's positive. So you have to design the deck in so that it delivers that experience. And I think what you were, the way that you've set up the new way of having, removing some of the distraction of all the different layouts and actually forcing a use case of like the best way to use the cards, I think that's really powerful as well. It really is. It 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 stops you having to learn deckable. You, you just or even to learn that deck because some right, decks are sort of quite complex. Right. But if I can just tell people it's A, B, and C, or A and D and whatever, you you, you, you can sort of guide the experience better. Totally, and you don't have to tell them this, that, or that because you just remove the options. So there's like, only one. This is what you do: them. click the only button available to you. Absolutely, right? So yeah. Cool. Let's go and do a mixed deck reading. Are you ready for a mixed deck reading? I am ready for a mixed deck reading. I have no idea what's going to come up in this okay. <laughs> mixed yeah. deck reading. So I'm just going to. Um, I didn't show. Did I, yes, yes, I did show this before. So I'm just going to do a quick draw, and and I've just got a card from Simple Truths, right? Yeah. Uh, did I, I got a dark card. I got a red one. I'd rather suffer than heal. Ooh, when I read that, I, I saw shuffle. <laughs> Would you rather <laughs> shuffle than heal? You have card decks on the brain. <laughs> so uh, there we go. I've got our first card. This is a single deck yes. reading at the moment. Let's cross over into the, the, the realm of mixed deck reading. So we just choose mix a uh, new deck. And now at the bottom are all the other decks that I have downloaded, right? So I'm going to choose... Get one card from the self-study deck. I could just pick it. I can shuffle. I've got the full deckable feature set. I can flip it. I'm going to choose willingness. And uh, I'm real. I'm will. I'm willing to heal. There you go. <laughs> Need to adjust my attitude. <laughs> you know, see, the cards are always telling you something, right? Very synergistic. Then, pick a new deck. And this time I'm going to pick a word from uh, Daily Ceremony. And I'm going to flip those over. I'm going to choose clarity. Right? I'll just, yeah, I've turned off sound so that won't play straight away. Uh, so that's a three card mixed reading. Let's go for the four. Uh, which one should we pick? I'm going to pick a value from the values deck. Let's do a random one. Okay. Alex. All right. I'll just get rid of that. Put that back up and a quick draw. There we go. Boom. Trust. Willingness, trust, clarity. And I want to heal rather than suffer. <laughs> Isn't that cool? I mean, that is that's a lot of journaling right there. <laughs> yeah. Totally. So right? you just pop into and you see, oh, by the way, did you notice that we changed the word to notes? Oh yes. So the notes comes from the deck that you've chosen. And then, you, so we can customize those words because some decks don't lean them uh, lead themselves to uh, wanting to use the word journal. It sounds very, you know, it's definitely on the fluffier side. It's less of a workplace yes. word, right? But no, we've so we've given you options there. Uh, and then, so you can choose whether it says notes or journal. Yeah, or muse for meditation. Muse. Uh, well, okay. There's choices, but yeah. Yes. So there we go. And there it is. Look, there's the, this is our timeline of the things we've looked at today. We've been very busy. <laughs> and all of that. Isn't that pretty amazing? It is. I'm pretty much, I think we've um, covered everything that I wanted to cover. I just want to say I just really appreciate the work that you've done and how I can see how far the app has come, more so today because even I didn't realise some of the beautiful things that have um, developed because sometimes you look at the app and you're just using it the way that you always use it right. and you don't click on other things and think to explore it more. So anyone who's played with Deckable before, I want to encourage you to actually use it again now that you've watched this video and play with it in a new way with a, like a fresh learner attitude. And it, as you can see, it's very simple. And even I haven't been using it to its full capacity and, and I love Deckable. So, yeah, I just want to say congratulations. I know that, um, you know, we've got a long way to go to build even more audience and purchases and I just think the, the app is so good now 
you know, people should be flocking to it and using it. And if, if you want to put your deck on deckable, the first thing you could, should do is go buy a deck and start playing with it and, you yeah. know, use that to motivate you to create a really beautiful experience for your users of your deck. Yep. I think, you know, just letting people go and buy half a dozen decks, try different things and, and see deckable through other people's eyes, through other people's decks, right? now dive in and do a spread and i've pulled up i've already started the process i'm on the self-study oracle and i'm just going to scroll down the layout page and i'm just going to pick a problem solution cause um spread okay so i just click that and start and i get to immediately shuffle the deck i can stop that when i'm ready um edit i can just uh drag drag the cards in like that so i'm just literally just dragging the card and dropping it over that item if i want to um i can flip all because people cheat in reality when they're drawing cards and if you want to do that you can flip them over if you don't you don't it's easy um so then i can drag that in like so and the other thing i can do uh, is quick draw and quick draw will just complete the draw and fill it, it you can fill in the the it randomly picks a card and pops it into every into every slot until you've completed your, your cards so that's now complete so i hit reveal uh and now i can just i could tap them one at a time and flip them over or flip them all over so integration mastery where uh, what is this is what issue is arising for you and then there's the description of the card i click on the next one uh perseverance and there's the description of the card in that case there we go Oops, there. And here with love, reflection, and there we go. So, so what if you don't remember what each of the cards represent? Like this one was what? Problem? Right. Well, that's below here. It's shown uh, what might be the root cause of this. Okay. So it's inserted in between the yeah, card yeah. So name you, and. You tap on the, each card and it brings you up. Yeah, so that's good because people can't, I couldn't, you know, when you do a complex spread, you'll forget oh, yeah, where yeah. you're up to. So that's perfect. Yeah. Exactly, right? So that's pretty cool. But if I do, um, I hope she, does she have the. So these are the generic ones, are they? Yeah. Yeah, no, she she made, she's actually made some of the, these are for her own, her own. Like here's the random practice spread. Oh, yeah. Right. So she's rotated those and done that herself. So, I mean, we provide like, I think about half a dozen, a dozen standard spreads. And then you can make, you can reuse those or you can make your own. So there we go. There's that. And I've got it. And I can just do a quick draw, quick draw, quick draw, and quick draw. And now reveal. And I can flip all. And there we are. Mm. You can see you know, the cards, the other cards are subdued. So you can see the, the one that's bold is the one that I'm. That's beautiful. Yeah. Right. So it's all below there. And uh, yeah, it's pretty slick, pretty easy. And so that's, um, that's spreads. Um, so the other thing I wanted to, we haven't uh, shown anyone yet, is doing a card sort. And so for people who are not aware of what a card sort is, it's basically a decision-making mechanism uh, where you're basically going to go through um, and choose things from too many choices. And you have to whittle your choice down to really figure out what your priority is. And it's very common to do this with emotions, uh, with strengths, and with values. And every, honestly, everyone should own a strengths, values, and emotions deck. Um, um, so we're going to pick, we're going to do a value sort. So um, do you want to, should I get, should, you can, I'll I'll start the, the sort. Uh, okay. And, just, and then I'm going to, uh, I won't shuffle it so that it's in alphabetical order. Um, but if I slide through here, just, you know, pick off the ones, if there's any of these that, that speak to you for your, uh, based on your own values. Yep. Okay. Um, keep going. Beauty, stop, beauty. It's important to me. <laughs> Let's drag that in. That's okay. Oh, yeah. Keep going. going. Uh, I don't know. I do oh, it, but I don't. That's the, cool thing. that's the cool thing about values, right? I would have yes. that was high for you, but it's cool. This is your choice, right? Yes. It's fascinating. For I sure. collaborate, but it, compassion and gratitude okay. and courage. How many am I allowed to have before I well, whittle yeah. them down? Yeah, we're going to whittle them down after. And creativity is big for me. And then, okay. is there like a learning one? Uh, probably. Search for learning. 
Oh, freedom. Freedom's my highest value. Freedom. Okay, yeah, I can go for that. And then uh, learning. I think that might be under H I J K. There it is. Uh, boom. Yeah. Okay. So, and and what happens? This is so typical. When you do a card sort, and this is they're really hard to do. I really, I mean, the first time I did one, I thought, oh, that's so easy. Let me just try it. Then it's actually really difficult. <laughs> um, and so here they are, right? And so let's just so I've grilled, you know, I've laid them out for you. Yes. So let's let's start thinking which ones are more or less important. Because we have well, to... freedom is my most important. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna move that, make that bigger and put it top yeah. right. And then we have the and then the... learning. Is my second okay. highest value. There we go. So there we go. I love learning. And then beauty is actually very high for me. I want to make the world a more beautiful place. It makes me happy having a beautiful home, a beautiful office. Right. Looking okay on Zoom. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Lifelong challenge. It's not as vain as it sounds. No, no, um, no. It's weird, but I think gratitude can go. Can we okay. in there? So just, 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 it's it's about it's saying I value, but it's not like if I had to get rid of one, it would probably be that. One. So I, to get to get rid of a card, just so people can see what we're doing, I just drag it into the bin. And it goes it goes solid red to delete it, and it's gone. Yeah. Right? All right. So we have um, we polish really it into three more, but uh, these are all these are my probably top ones. <laughs> well, we can sort of maybe put hide creativity and put it behind learning because you like yeah. to learn creatively right yeah and usually that's what i find is a lot of things in our minds hide behind the other ones so learning's your dominant thing i don't know your yeah. is to courage is that connected to freedom i don't know maybe and compassion i mean that's really big for me but it sort of underlies everything right like right i mean you you there was no but freedom way. is definitely my maxed out one right. okay so <laughs> There's no hard and fast rules about how many. Yeah. If you have, I think you should always shoot. What happen, What people typically do is they start from a deck of 60, they get down to 20 and then 10 and then five, and then the la getting down to three is the hardest. So for yes. me, I, mine are, uh, my top three are creativity, um, adventure, and integrity. Yes. And then I I've can got, see that. I've got this story multiple times that. Through my relationship with my girlfriend, I've I've discovered that really relationship is in there too, right? Um, I changed my values. As a yeah, result. you realigned with it yeah. after right. thinking about it. I guess for me, like adventure is in freedom. So it's depending what freedom means to you as well, right? Yeah, exactly. Because I'm way into adventure, and but with freedom, I get to choose how I spend my time and what adventures I go on. Right. Yeah. So. This is really good. Um, so people can do this card. Yeah, it's fun to do it because it's so visual, right? And then the other way to the other way to do it is to give it to some to a friend and say, um, "What do you think of my values?" Without telling them what yours are, <laughs> because that'll give you like a three hundred and sixty sense check. Or even even if you tell people what you think your values are, they're like, "Really." Yeah, you, they're like, well, how about when you did this? Oh, well, maybe, <laughs> you know, because we have. I think this our our three each are quite obvious. Like yeah. people do actually equate me with my top three. Yeah. Um, but one thing I learned um, too was this: there's an intellectual value, and then right. there's what do you spend your time on? Like, I value health, but am like I think I mentioned it right. earlier, but am I actually putting effort into my health? Because right. you've got your intellectual values or what you think you should be valuing, but then where are you spending your time? And I guess that was the revelation for you with your relationship. It wasn't a quotable value, but then you no. realised how important it was for you, so it had to realign. And it was there underneath everything because it's not just my relationship to her. It's my, it's, it's, it's my relationship to my kids, to my friends, um, to, to the whole decable community. Like I think of everyone and, you yeah. know, like, I, you and I talk a lot, right? And I talk to lots of people in the community as much. And I think of you all as friends. And um, some people think that's weird that this is a kind of business. No. Uh, it just makes sense, right? Why would yeah. you want to hang out with people that you don't think are cool? So, um, but the, one of the things I just wanted to say about values is if you pick your values effectively, and if you go to bed every night 
and you think to yourself, did I live in line with my values today? And if you can honestly say, yes, I did, you, you're going to be a complete peace with yourself. It, mm. When you I'd say if integrity is something that you value, which some things you just value without putting them in the value, right? Like I'd oh. never have integrity in my values because I take it for granted in myself, like that I'm authentic and have integrity. I haven't really thought about doing video much, but now that I've seen that, I'm quite inspired. So you can get a baseline of your deck out there that you're happy with, but then you can iterate on that as well. By the way, when it comes to video, yes, what you should do is green screen yourself as yep. you record the video, and then you put the card in question behind you. Love it. Yeah, that's going to look great, I think. <laughs> and I think like you can do is... something like that in Canva. I haven't tried yet. I might have to make a video on how to do that once I learn how to do it. So there's just so much we can do to give people an experience, and it's well beyond just oracle cards or tarot oh. cards. It's about education. It's about creative thinking. So you can actually, you know, if you've got a book or a podcast, you know, you, you can oh. actually use that as intellectual property that you massage into a beautiful deck experience right, right. oh just last the last this is just a, a mock-up let me show you this we talked about this the other day um so you know you said it's like much more than oracle and tarot and these are the seven segments that we see on deckable the seven types of decks that exist so workplace and strategy wellness therapy and diversity, learning, um, coaching and collaboration, creativity and ideation, games and challenges, and then prompts and workbooks. So, there's... so when you see the Oracle, you know, section is just one seventh of that. Yeah. Totally. Um, and I've worked on a couple of decks, a wellness deck um, that are outside the Oracle one. And then there's one about your career. So you can definitely, and a collaboration one, teamwork one, 
I'm really into creativity and ideation as well. But now I'm thinking, oh, maybe my son and I could create a game one because uh, he's into games. So there's just so many you can do. The, anything is pretty much deckable in my opinion, Nick. One thing I love and I've been starting to do in some of my decks is having different shapes with transparent backgrounds and the right. deck of ways you can see what happens when you have transparency in a big way. So, so the all... deck of ways it tells people how they can use deckable for their decks. Yeah, absolutely. And so this, I'm just going to start with this one. Oops. So this is um, the summarization of the whole uh, the whole deck. Is that there are 21 different ways that people use card decks. So, but then we. We've kind of clustered those together into three segments. There's randomizers, and we've 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 shown lots of examples of randomizing throughout this this uh, this conversation, right? The shuffling, dealing, drawing, flipping. Um, but you see everything in the green circle is is a randomizer. Then sense maker, and that's a big part of card decks. Is even when you even when you go to do a tarot reading, that is a sense maker. You're trying to help understand. You know, you're asking yourself questions about what am I facing in life. Then when I make some business choices of or some strategy choices, that's sense making too. And the third Even thing, just thinking about the values deck, ranking yeah. values, like which I say these are my values, but what does it actually look like in my daily life? I value, I say I value health, but then I never do anything about it. Right. So sort of ranking as well. Right, right. Oh, we should have done a card sort. That was the other thing we were meant to do. Um so and then the third thing is reflectors, which is basically just looking back on what you've done. And that can be meditating or going back to a prior reading. What did I think I was going to do? I look what I did. I look for how look how far I've come. Because, you know, in, in a mental wellness sense, you need to do something, see yourself doing it, and then recognize, oh my God, look how far I've come. Because mm -hmm. we often feel we haven't come very far, right? Well, we've come further than we think we have as well. Because okay. if okay. people don't take like a, a checkpoint of where they're at you know any coaches listening will know that if you don't get a, a starting point really clarified with the clients they'll go on this beautiful journey with you and by the end they think they think they started up here instead of back here <laughs> right exactly so um so there that's uh that the summarization of it but these are all the individual these are all the individual cards so but what's really cool about these cards is they're all transparent so I'll just get rid of that and bring back in some shuffle and a flip. And um, so here I've got these three cards, right? But they're actually transparent. So you'll see as I drag that over, the, I can see through it, right? And I think people are going to love this. And if you're creating in Canva, you create whatever you want and then you save it as a PNG with a transparent background. So that's how you get this effect. And the same if you were using Photoshop or something else. And so that's fun, and that's just kind of plain. <laughs> this gets even funner. Um, oh, combine, create. Yeah. So, far, so this is a good deck for people to get when they're thinking about creating their deck, right? Right. And this deck's free, right? So, so you see that's transparent behind it? Oh, wow. Yes. So we put partial transparency there. So you can see the deal through the the quadrant right and so a that spread is cool. <laughs> a spread is just a quadrant right so that's how we use spreads business people use quadrants and and tarot people use spreads and layouts right so it's this, they're both the same thing but it's just a way of using a deck uh there's a few other really fun ones in here oh grid you've seen yeah, grid I like is, the light bulb too it's cool <laughs> it's got a little the sneaky one of the cards is transparent Yes. And, um, I'm going to search for a uh, journal. There's the journal card. Um, and so the pencil will be transparent. Yeah. Hanging yeah. over the edge. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Right. Love it. And then, but, but this is a multi sided card because we think of journaling and meditation as other sides of the same card. Right. So there's the, there's the meditate. Yes. Oh, wow. Are the other cards double sided or just that one? Oh yeah. Well, they're all they're all uh, different. Multi sided. 
Okay. So each of them has got a guidebook side. Yeah. So that's the guidebook integrated to explain. The and look how cute that. it is. It's someone's actual handwriting. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and from before, remember, we should really choose the uh, the grid layout. There we go. Yeah, so it's easy to, my brain just goes, whew, <laughs> it's organized. But it doesn't feel like a deck anymore. We've made, we have really, this deck leans heavy and hard on the fact that decks are playful and it makes them even more playful. Yes. I've got so many ideas, Nick, I need just to not do anything else and just create decks all day. So yeah. I think as you can see, everyone, that this is pretty powerful stuff and if we, um, you know, look, play with decks ourselves, get the deck of ways and really look at how you can create an experience, once people start buying these sorts of decks, they're not going to want to go back to just a normal experience. There will always be those of us who love a tangible deck, right? I'm in the process of doing a Kickstarter for this deck. So, you know, there's a place for both. But I think, you know, in the increasingly digital world, you know, there's just so much capacity to create something beautiful on Deckable that gives a really good experience for the end user. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's, it's we've created, like, we all walk everywhere with our mobile phone in our pocket or our tablet to hand. And now all of that's available. Everything I've just shown you, you can do on a phone, on a tablet. It's Yep. It's, we've always got them handy. <laughs> it's, it's so powerful to, to have that experience, right? So, well, I just want to say thank you for your time and thank you for creating such a beautiful app. I'm keen to go get a couple more decks today, including Washer Peak. So, you know, if you're if you're wanting to make a deck, go and play with Deckable, buy some decks, follow Deckable on social media as well. Um, Nick's doing some great videos on TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, not so much. Facebook doesn't come up as often for me because I'm always seeing you everywhere else. So follow Deckable and, you know, get some inspiration. And I just want to say thanks for your time, Nick. Thank you. It's been great.